Now this is VT8 NorCal Hobbies, so I am right now in the last position, but I'm actually at penultimate, we're just waiting on the red shell. And while everybody races, I'm actually going to spend my time playing Pong, uh, just for fun. Or Pac-Man, one of the two, probably both. Right now, it's going to be Pong right about now, right there, oh, found shit. it. Uh, but anyway, uh, this has been fun, so I've been running the uh, Zero. Now really quick, with the Zero, uh, the front springs, uh, those are the stock springs, and then I went lighter in the back. Uh, it should be the other way, so speaking to Andy, uh, or Extra Crispy, who's right here to my left, uh, he did the same thing, softer in the rear, harder in the front, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong, but the point is, instead of going looking for softer springs, he actually looked for harder springs all around, and that gave a better result, uh, he's also running the zero. So on testing the zeros, the best way with the zeros is actually to go a spring rate up so start going up spring rates from whatever the factory setting is and it's kind of tough because not all manufacturers use the same labeling system so you know uh, hobby king has a big giant set for very inexpensive just you can get something like that start with the soft ones and then build up uh now thoughts on motors because i know this is a uh, a big one. So the Phantom Helix, I've run the Phantom Helix on a variety of cars. I ran it on my F1. If you remember, I made a video on how that Helix just pulls. Uh, so this one here, this is the much more... Uh, hold on. Yeah, I accidentally dropped the box. So this is the Fleta ZX V3. So this is the much more uh, outlaw. And I made some tests. The rotor is very powerful and the thing has really nice RPM. Now, uh, my thoughts compared to the slot machine. Now the slot machine, uh, in a previous series, I ran the slot machine, tried it out. It was pretty good, that was the Trinity. Now, I uh, came to find out that recently, Roar dropped uh, Trinity from the approved list because back when it was uh, Trinity owned, before they sold it to Horizon Hobby, uh, they had changed the design compared to what they had submitted for approval. Uh, so then, uh, once Horizon bought them, this somehow surfaced. I have no idea how. But long story short, uh, Horizon and Roar agreed that they would drop it from Roar. Uh, Helix, I think, still pending approval. Uh, but the Trinity, Trinity performed well. This one is way better. This one's actually, I would say this one, the Helix, are probably the ones that very similar. The Hobby Wing uh, G3R, that one I think is better on the Formula One or the lighter cars, like the touring cars. Uh, th this is just heavy. My car is f almost 450 grams, this one right here. So I'm, I'm really overweight. Uh, not to mention this body from HPI sits kind of high, so I wouldn't go with the 1970 body, I would actually go with the uh, protoform. That one sits lower, a little bit lighter, not much lighter, it's probably 12 grams lighter or something, but it sits lower. Uh, and the reason why I cannot make this body sit lower in the rear, maybe it's just the, no, the zero, it measures the same as the regular touring car. Uh, the rear wheels will actually hit the, the rear wheel wells, so I have to drive with the body somewhat high. It's probably at least five millimeters higher than most of the bodies. So the body's pretty high up there. Uh, but let's see. Uh, so thoughts on this one. It accelerates. It's really, really good uh, as far as acceleration. Uh, traction is horrible. Uh, long ago, I thought I was going to stop doing VTA because my friends wanted to do some other uh, things. So I actually gave away a bunch of my old tires. And rumor has it that the older the tires, the better, or the more worn out they are, the better they get. So, unfortunately, these tires I got this series, and I've been wearing them down. Now, many of the guys here, my understanding is they grind them that down, or they use some oils. You'll notice that some of the tires are ballooned. Yeah, that's against the rules, but yeah, everybody does it. Uh, and then saucing, it depends on the track. So, for those of you that are watching from other places, your track may not allow saucing. Uh, here they do, and if they don't, then everybody does, which is somewhat interesting. Previous uh, uh, series, I remember like, people would ask me, like, what sauce are you using? It's like, your car keeps sliding. I'm like, I'm not using sauce. It's like, you're supposed to use sauce. You always use sauce. Like, no, okay. Sounds good. Uh, but 
uh, that's that's why you can't make up any ground here in the middle. Whereas if you look at some of the cars, they look very very composed. See that one even traction ruled right there, the orange one, uh, the orange and black. Uh, and I haven't really seen many cars traction roll. It was usually a white Camaro that used to traction roll a lot. Uh, but with this motor and the Helix, I'll tell you something. Uh, I can keep up with cars on the on the straight back before with some of the others, even the Trinity. I would struggle. Uh, some of the guys were running R1s. I'm not sure if they were running different rotors. I have no idea. Uh, R1's another choice. Uh, KV's lower, though. Uh, but I don't know. I, I, I have no idea. Uh, I hear a lot of the people have been switching over to Hobbywing from R1 here at this particular track. There's other tracks where R1 is loved like you wouldn't believe. Uh, every track has its brand preference. Uh, here, uh, it's mainly Team Powers. Now, Team Powers, and I'm not the only one. There was a gentleman, if you follow some of the threads on some of my other videos, uh, my 21.5, actually, my motor came with a different rotor. It was a 11 millimeter. It was a smaller rotor. It wasn't the spec motor or rotor. So that's something to keep in mind. If you're in a club, you're probably not going to check, so it wouldn't matter. You buy it out of the box, and that's the way it came. Uh, but then if you end up doing Roar later on, so this this is really more to like newbies or people in clubs that haven't been doing it for very long, don't know this. Uh, they're probably going to check the gauss on your rotor or your rotor, so at that point that motor wouldn't work. But no big deal, you just go to the shop, for example here in NorCal, they'll swap it right out. So they, they're pretty cool about it. So to be honest, Team Powers, I don't know, I think it's pretty easy. Whoever, the shop that manages them are probably really cool about it. Uh, so I'll just swap them out. So I may have to give uh, 215 Team Powers uh, another chance with a uh, touring car, but that's something I'll mention there. Uh, but here, just watch the straights. Uh, and then do watch my other videos with the Helix, especially the F1, because there I have a first-person view camera uh, that I was running on that car. And wow, that Helix pulled. Uh, so I'm actually going to put the Helix back in this car for the next race. But one of the things I want to try out of curiosity is, uh, instead of sending it to 5 amps, I'm going to set the timing down, look at the KVs, and then change the gearing so that I can match the uh, RPM uh, f with the final drive compared to where, I'm, where I have the Helix. Uh, the Helix right now, if you're wondering where it was, it was in my trunk. Uh, but I didn't bring the soldering iron, so I couldn't swap it to test. So, well, I guess I could have asked. The problem is I'm running four classes. Uh, you don't have time to do anything with four classes. Oh my god, I just realized uh, Red Shell was going the wrong way for uh, like 20 feet there. Uh, so that's something else, and I am going to complain in my other race video about running five classes. Sorry, four classes. I think I said five, I meant four. Four classes. And the only reason why I was doing it is so I could run mini with my buddies and... None of them are showing up with their minis. Uh, but so far, uh, temperature on the motor, really cool as well. Uh, I mean, you're, you're looking at, say, around, well, I should really say under 60 degrees uh, Celsius, so under 140 degrees Fahrenheit, so it, it doesn't care. And that's with a 51 pinion, uh, 92 spur. I would have to check on the spur, but it's. I don't think I'm running a 96. I'm th I think I'm running a 92. Uh, but, like I said, it's, it's pretty impressive. Well, anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.